you ever wondered what the price difference is between supermarkets in Switzerland? Everyone knows that Lidl and Aldi are cheaper, but by how much? To find out the answer to this question, we bought the exact same groceries from Coop, Migros and Lidl. In doing this little experiment, we also finally calculated how much do we actually spend on groceries in Switzerland per week. So the way we did this experiment is that one week we wrote a shopping list of all the different things that we needed that specific week, and then we went and bought everything from Coop. And then another week we bought all those same things from Migros, and then another week we bought the same exact list from Lidl. This shopping list is not everything we buy every single week, obviously we vary what we shop. And if chocolate is not on this list, that's not to say that we don't eat chocolate. Come on guys, we're in Switzerland after all. To make a comparison as fair as possible, we try to buy items as similar as possible in each of these shops. But obviously sometimes we're limited by what they stocked that particular day. And once we did the shopping, I added up all the different prices to come to a total cost. I also adjusted the weight of all the weighable items like fruits and vegetables. So again, the comparison is as fair as possible. So what exactly was on our shopping list? So we bought bio tofu hummus, tress bread, whole milk, bio rice milk, plain yogurt, soy yogurt, gruyere AOP surchois, free range medium eggs, chicken fillets, fair trade bananas, apples, clementines, carrots, onions, broccoli, red peppers, courgettes, aubergines, mushrooms, potatoes, haricot beans, chickpeas, chopped or peeled tomatoes, fusilli or pasta spirals, and oats. Now let's actually look at how much it cost us to buy this full list from each of the shops. So from Coop, this shop cost 79.55. From Migro, it was 66.91. And from Lidl, it was 54.72. So for this particular shop, Migro is 16% cheaper than Coop, and Lidl is 32% cheaper than Coop. Since the packets of chicken that we bought were slightly different from all three shops in terms of weight, and I couldn't really adjust it because that's the packet that you buy, you can't change that. I thought, okay, maybe that's skewing the results. What if I take that out of the equation? But even then, Migros was still cheaper than Coop by about 8% and Lidl was cheaper than Coop by about 28%. Were you surprised by any of these differences? Let me know in the comments below. And now let's compare some prices for specific items in each of these shops. I'm not going to go through all of the items, I think that will just make this video very long. But I will link a spreadsheet where I summarized all that information down below in the description box. It was interesting to see that some prices are actually quite consistent across the three shops, so it wouldn't matter where you buy these items from. That is true for things like eggs, oats, fusilli or pasta spirals and gruyere souchois. But for some items, the difference is actually huge if you compare them. So for example, if you shop at Lidl, you can make a good saving if you're buying whole milk or bio rice milk. But the biggest difference of all was actually on tofu. And for example, in Lidl, that costs 278 per kilo. And in Kolb and Migro, the price varies between 13 and 15 francs per kilo, which I think is quite a crazy difference. For some items, the price in Migro and Lidl was actually quite comparable and that was cheaper than in Coop. For example, for these chicken fillets that we bought, in Coop they cost almost 20 francs per kilo, whereas in Migro and Lidl they were around 14 francs per kilo. And in some instances, Migro was actually cheaper than Coop and Lidl. And that was true for things like bananas and mushrooms. Watching the trend of how this is all going, you'd think that Coop is always more expensive than the other two shops, but that's not actually always the case. For example, for fruits and vegetables, Coop actually has a special line that's called Unique. And under this brand, they're selling slightly wonky or out of spec vegetables, which is great, which means they are reducing food waste, but also these items tend to be cheaper. And actually you can make quite a good save by buying those and most of the time they taste great, they maybe look a bit funky but it doesn't really matter. So here in the shop we bought potatoes, red peppers and also carrots from this unique range and they were always cheaper than the alternative from Migro or Lidl. Mike actually also suggested this idea of looking at all the different things that we bought and making the best shopping combination. So which items would be best to buy from which shop, considering how much value you're getting out of your money. An interesting fact is that it's not always best to buy everything from Lidl. There are some items that are best to buy from Coop or Migro. So to get the best deal on our shopping list, 
we need to buy carrots, peppers, broccoli and potatoes from Coop. Then we need to get mushrooms, fair trade bananas, haricot beans, chopped tomatoes and fusilli pasta from Migros. And the rest does need to come from Little. But even then, if we get to a total from this best shopping combination, it adds to 53 francs 19. But if we remember how much was the total cost if we shopped all these different items just in Little, that was 54 francs 72. That's not actually that much more expensive than doing this best shopping combination. But obviously price is not the only factor that you consider when you're doing your groceries. So let's talk about pros and cons for each of these shops. The number one pro for all of these different shops is actually that in all of them it's quite easy to buy locally sourced foods like produce, eggs, dairy and meat, which is great. Another pro is that you can buy pretty much any fruit and veg without packaging. Overall, I'd say the quality in Coop, Migros and in Middle is really good. Obviously, sometimes you'll have a bit of a hit and miss with each of these shops, but overall, I wouldn't say there's one that's much, much better in terms of quality than the other. And all of the shops will have really good bio product selection. I know in other countries it's called organic. And for some products, the default option will be bio, so they won't even stock the standard option of it. And now let's talk through the pros and cons of each particular shop based on what we've experienced here in Nishta. So let's start with Coop. The main bonus of Coop is that there's always a great variety of items to choose from, especially when it comes to produce. And I think this is something they pride themselves on. You'll get a really nice shopping experience. Everything's laid out nicely. Everything is nice and clean. You just enjoy being in that shop. They have a really good Coop loyalty program. And as part of that program, you can download the Coop Supercard app. And through this app, you can activate various offers and discounts and vouchers and they always have loads to choose from. And because they often have these vouchers for multiplying of points, you can actually collect a lot more supercar points and then convert them into more money for your next shops. And what we also noticed is they seem to have a lot of multi-pack offers. So for example, you buy eight tins of tuna and you get 40% off, or you buy, I don't know, 10 bags of flour and you get 44% off or something like that. Obviously it wouldn't work for every person, but actually if you use these items a lot, you can make quite a good saving. Obviously Coop has a few cons. The first one, which is the most obvious one that you probably already noticed from the little experiment we did, is that Coop will be more expensive than your Migro or Lidl or Aldi. And it also seems that at least in our shop they stock a lot of items and quite often what you'll see is that they'll have a massive metal bin where they put all the things that are about to expire because they stock too much of it and it seems like a really really perfect storm to create a lot of waste which is not great. Moving on to Migro, as a big shop it has a good variety of items to choose from. Maybe it's not as great as Coop but still quite good. They also seem to have quite a good policy on food waste which personally I really like. On their website it's quite easy to find the data on how much food waste they generate. According to the data I found, they sell either at full price or reduced price or give away 98.6% of all their food and about 1.3% goes to animal feed and only 0.4% actually gets incinerated. They also partner up with an app called Too Good To Go, which helps them to reduce their food waste. And also for us as consumers, we can actually buy some cheaper food sometimes through that app. I couldn't find many cons for Migra, but I think the one that's worth mentioning here is that their loyalty program is not as good as at Coop. They only send you vouchers and discounts every few months, or sometimes you can get them after you've shopped at Migra, you get like an extra receipt, but it means that basically in order to get a discount, you have to first go shop there, and only then you can get extra points voucher, for example, for your next shop. Whereas in Coop, you can activate all those different discounts before you've even been to the shop. Moving on to Lidl, the main pro here is that you can get good quality products at a cheaper price. But with the low price come quite a few cons. The first one is that they only have a limited selection of items due to the way they run their shops. So if you're a moderately adventurous consumer and you shop only in Lidl all the time, you'll probably get bored at some point. And there's some things that you just can't buy there, so you have to go to Co-op or Migro. Also, the way Lidl stock their shops means that they're quite conservative mm. with the amount of stuff they put out there. So what you'll often see is that if you go there in the evening, half of the produce aisle will be empty because in Lidl, when it's gone, it's gone. And overall, if you've ever been to Lidl, you know it's not the 
as nice of a shopping experience as going to Coop or Migro, for example. And now let's move on to how much we spend on our groceries. But before I tell you the exact amount we spend per week, I think it's good to give you some context of where do we normally shop and what do we normally buy. We tend to do one big shop a week, but then we always have one or two little top-ups because we always forget something or we run out of something during the week. And sometimes if we don't have time to go to Lidl, which is a bit further from us, we just go and buy everything we need from Coop. We mostly cook at home and we mostly cook from scratch. We try to eat a bit less meat and fish, so we buy more beans and eggs and protein alternatives, but it's a bit difficult to do that in Switzerland comparing to what we've experienced in the UK. What we often find is that the protein alternative products here are pre-made into like a meatball or a coated chicken piece or something like that, whereas what we'd like is more like the raw ingredient, if you see what I mean. And often these raw ingredients, so for example the chicken pieces, will cost quite a lot more than real chicken, so we don't always buy those. So how much do we actually spend on groceries? I estimated that based on the data from the past six months, we spent 86 francs per week for two people, and that equates to about 368 francs per month. I think this amount is probably less than what I thought it would be when I added all these numbers up. But what I'd like to know is also how much do you spend on your groceries and where do you shop? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye!